What's up everybody? Good morning. Coming at you from our home waters today and we are on our flats boat which you haven't seen in our videos in a while. I think probably since the Keys. We might have used it a couple times after that. But today we are offshore. We just caught a bunch of bait, loaded up. I have a nice big old thread fin going out. See him right there. Let me get him in the water. And we are going to send out a couple drifts here, see what we can get into. But we are looking for some fresh shark bait this morning. The goal today is to catch a black tip shark and catch it and cook it for y'all. So I'm excited. I'm going to get this bait out, cast it out, see if we can get some fresh juicy bonitas or some kind of fish that we can use for fresh shark bait, which we have some frozen shark bait. We'll see what happens. Drag leads on. It's on. But using my snook rod, it's usually a fun fight. We try to get them in quick though. It's on the surface, it looks like it's shark bait. Oh my gosh, bait's gonna jump in the boat. Oh my gosh. Whew. You got him. You got him. Bonita in the boat. Fresh shark bait. Can't go wrong with that. Check out that beautiful fish. I love how lit up they are and how hard they fight. But beautiful fish to hook up with, with the family, bend some rods, get a lot of action all day long in the summertime with these bad boys. Nice. All right, guys, we have moved to the shark location where we're gonna catch some inshore black tip sharks. That's the kind of shark we're targeting. And I just wanna give you guys a little actual factual information before a bunch of you Shark Week junkies start blowing up the comments, okay? We are targeting black tip sharks. I know when you watch Shark Week, every shark is an shark. endangered, crazy shark, okay? These are not great whites. These are not tiger sharks. These are not hammerhead sharks. Those are protected species. This is a black tip shark. In the state of Florida, if you look at NOAA, that's the way you look at these things, NOAA, we'll put the link down in the description below, black tip sharks are in the least regulated category. There's not even a size limit. They're unregulated. Well, they're unregulated except for the fact that, you know, you're only, you're only allowed to keep one uh, any size, okay? Each person, two for a boat. And that quote, according to NOAA, the fishing stat is at recommended levels, okay? There's plenty of these sharks, you can eat them. Just cut up a nice chunk of fresh bonita that we caught a little earlier today. And it's not the biggest piece in the world, it's not the smallest piece in the world. We're catching smaller size sharks here in shore. And we prefer to eat a shark that is on the smaller side. So we're gonna see what happens. So we hook into a big full grown black tip, which is probably five foot long, we'll more than likely not keep that fish. But anything smaller than that, something we're gonna be after. So you can see I'm just rigging it up right through. I can get this just like so we're gonna hang it like that so that way the fish actually gets hooked we're using a 10 knot three times strong mustad circle hook here in line then you can see we have the hook crimped on to our 250 pound mono leader and we use mono because sharks are very sensitive to wire and in short they're really not going to chew through this 250 pound mono so from here we probably got a four foot leader and then on the end here, we've got it crimped on to our heavy duty mustad swivel and then tied on with a uni knot to our, um, to our fluorocarbon leader, which we have a little bit of top shot of fluorocarbon on here. But the main line on this particular rig, which we love is 50 pound mono, tough line braid, sorry. And we're using a Cabo 80 paired with the star rod. And this is a great setup we've been using for years. We love it. So I'm gonna clean off my hands, get this casted out. Nice job, Dr. Sizzle. And typically I'm gonna put one line in the bottom just gonna cast it out, just like that. And another line we'll put out with a little uh, balloon on it to keep it off the bottom and, and a little bit higher. So we're covering a little bit more of the water column and see which ones the uh, sharks prefer. You never know. I think we got a shark on. He's messing with it. Circle hook, let him get it tight. He's definitely swimming with it. Here we go, here we go. Oh! Doubled up! <laughs> that didn't take long. He might jump. Woo! Oh my gosh! Okay. All right, guys, we got two fish on. Yeah. <laughs> a little crazy. We got a big mess going on here. Where's Frank when we need him? No, just kidding. Um, so I just actually just dropped the other rod that I was catching that bigger shark on. He was huge. Trying to get a guesstimate on this fish. We don't want to catch the biggest one in the world, like I was saying before, mainly because we don't need all that shark meat, honestly. We just want to do a catch and cook and 
try them out. We don't need a ton of meat. Don't need to kill the big breeders. All right, he had swallowed that hook almost all the way through and uh, just broke off. All right, so we got a good release on that one. We've got to catch another one. You ready? Yeah. Hooked up again. See if we can get this one in. Coming up, third shark. Not in the boat yet though. Taking my dog for a walk. All right, guys, we, we determined that was a spinner shark, and those do have a limit. They gotta be 54 inches, and again, we're targeting black tip. So, uh, uh, circle hooks, having the right tools, took the hook out, fish swam away. Uh, now we can go after our black tip again. Get it. Here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. not fighting at all he's just coming right to the boat so this is going to be a very lively shark but once he sees the boat he's going to freak here he comes here he is got him that is a oh oh my god he just popped oh no oh no that was so weird sorry that was a good move of me I totally, my line just went slow, like, like he popped and I fell backwards a little bit, like just fell back and he's there still. Now he knows he's hooked. All right, guys, wrestled this guy to the boat, and he's a black tip because there's actually no black tip on this fin here. The spinners actually have the black tip here, so a little misnomer. You can see the black tips here and, and this kind of thing. And uh, the way this fin here is like this, the spinner sharks are further up that way. So uh, that's the gist of it. Nice job. All right, first things first, y'all. Shark is in the boat. And right now I am using my knife to cut his tail off and bleed him if I can. Okay, good. Tail is mostly off and it's gushing blood, which is exactly what we want. We want to go ahead and bleed the shark. And a lot of you guys know that from just different fish species that you catch. You want to bleed them out, particularly if they're a bloody species. And with sharks, they urinate through their skin. So with them, we like to bleed them out right away by cutting the tail, and then we're gonna gut them next and get rid of all those innards so the meat doesn't get spoiled or taste nasty. And you can tell it's a male by these two little claspers on their end, and all those marks you might have seen on his body, he's actually, that's mating marks from mating with other species of sharks, and they, they beat each other up apparently. So I'm just gonna go ahead and gut him. This guy's done. Sharp knife does a trick. Oh boy. This is my most fun part. No. <laughs> Funnest part of the day, gutting a shark, which I've only done one other time. And I'm just gonna go ahead and try to just start cutting it out. But this stuff is so warm, has a weird feeling to it. It's not my favorite. There you go. In the water. Oh, 
all set with that. Probably gonna, we're gonna go ahead and probably dunk them in some salt water right now to help remove the rest of the blood and then we're gonna get them right on ice. And like I said, cat pack the body cavity and just, con just completely cover the fish, the shark in ice and let them sit for a couple hours and then we're gonna fillet them for you. Okay guys, we are back at the house and in, inside my 165 quart grizzly cooler, we have got the black tip shark. So I'm gonna just pull them out and we're gonna get right to work on this bad boy. Got the shark out on the table. I've made my selection of Bubba knives that I'm gonna be using today. And all the products that I use for fishing in all my videos is in my Amazon store. Please check that out if you want to in the description below. And as an associate at Amazon, I earn on qualifying purchases. So check that out. All right, so let's get right to this. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go start cutting off these fins. And you do need a sharp knife for this. It goes right through it like butter. So that way when we go to actually get the shark steaks off is going to be much more easy to handle without all these dorsal and pectoral fins and anal fins. Side. And just so you know too, I'm sure Brian explained that in the last video, but basically the reason why we knew it was a black tip is because all these other fins have black tips on it except this anal fin, the last fin here, and then that is completely white. And that is the reason why they're called a black tip and differentiates them from a spinner shark as well. Just gonna cut the spin off. He scared me. Just turn the shark around for me being a left-handed person. I wanna work with him this way. I'm just gonna hit the table with water real quick. And the simplest way to do this, honestly, because he's so long and like oddly shaped, you don't wanna be working with a giant fillet like you guys normally see me do with fish and just working on one side and get the whole fillet off. So we're gonna do this in sections. I'm gonna start on the back side here and we're gonna work with manageable, manageable sections of shark. Cut through like that, and then I'm just gonna follow the main line over here. And shark skin is very tough, so like I said, you want a sharp knife for this. And we're just gonna follow it down. And then we're just gonna flay that big old chunk of meat off. Just like that. Check that out. Look at that meat. That looks great. Honestly, like if I were to hand this to you too, it actually looks like he has some worms. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen that in a shark, but I haven't flayed a lot of sharks either. But I believe this looks very similar to swordfish or even salmon, something very thick. You know, it actually even reminds me of a wahoo, just the way it's shaped in here. And it's a very firm, tough meat. So that's what I could best describe it to you, is it really looks like swordfish. If you didn't know it was a shark, it looks like swordfish. All right, let's get the next piece off. Another manageable section. There you go. Let's do one more. And I'm up by the gills here, you can see. Okay, there we go. Just got the last piece off on this one particular side. Beautiful piece of meat there. So I'm going to do the same exact thing that I just showed you to the other side of the shark. But before I get to that, I wanna show you how I'm gonna prepare the pieces that I've already taken off um, to actually eat the actual shark steak. So let's get to that. Sharks have a fairly big bloodline underneath the skin here, like you can see. So what we're gonna do is we're really gonna make sure when we skin it, that we skin it up high away from this bloodline. So we're gonna leave a lot of that, that bloodline and meat some, on the actual skin. And like we said earlier in this video that sharks actually urinate through their skin. They don't have like an actual urinary tract. So it's interesting. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make a cut. Just like that. Now I'm going to skin it. So that way it's manageable. And then that way I make sure that I'm not getting the bloodline on the actual piece of meat here. And just like you guys have always seen me, same kind of skinning procedure. I'm just gonna hold them at a 45 degree angle. Let's get right through it. 
Like I said, this is a very tough piece of meat. So a sharp knife does the trick. So you can see here that I left the blow line on there. I've left a little bit of meat, but that's not the end of the world. And you can see how beautiful that section of meat is. I'll get the, the rest of that little blood line off, but he is ready to eat. Beautiful shark steak. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the whole shark, going to fillet, just like I showed you guys, skin, skin the rest of it, fillet the rest of the shark, and I'm gonna meet you guys back inside the house for the cook portion. Nice job on that fillet, our sizzle. Thanks. Didn't you the best? No. <laughs> <laughs> but welcome to another episode of Cooking with Pudding. And I got my special inside hat on. Thanks again, Carl. You love, she loves the hat. Yes, the hat is pretty awesome. It makes him <laughs> official. It makes me official. It's like a chef's hat. <laughs> but uh, through the wonders of movie magic, we've soaked some of that fish in milk, and some we didn't soak overnight in milk, because they say you're supposed to do that, and we want to really see what the taste difference is. Oh, hold on, I gotta take this off. I got, I gotta cook it right here. That's actually the milk version. So we're gonna make some tacos. But first we're going to try out which one tastes a little bit better, then we're going to put in our tacos. Because truthfully, we tried this black tip shark before, and some other folks have tried it. Yes. And it maybe it wasn't, look at her pushing for the camera. I'm just getting closer, I feel like I'm talking so far <laughs> you away. You need to be in front and I need to be in I'm back. I'm talking so look, far away from the camera. Isn't this better? This to... is much better guys, isn't it? We need to be much closer. <laughs> Alright. No, so, go ahead. And it, it's a very firm meat, okay? Almost, yes. some people call it like a lamb chop. But other firm meats for fish include wahoo, tuna, swordfish, and other sharks, which up north is pretty pretty common to eat. Right, like the like, mako. Yeah, mako and threshers. threshers they eat all the time. So this one is very similar, it's firm, and I've cut it uh, thinner, and just a little bit of butter on not that high a heat. Okay, so let's try it real quick. Yeah. Right, so here is the non-soaked. Oh, we're eating right here, okay. Just try it. Try it. So here we go. I tried some earlier, and it's... Which one is that? That's the non-soaked. That was honestly not terrible. I was, um, no? I was a little more scared it was going to be a little terrible, but it wasn't. That was I'm gonna manageable. Try. I didn't make any faces, did I? <laughs> Don't hide from the camera, Sizzle. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna, saying. I'm going to try the soaked. That wasn't bad. He actually cooked it perfect, so it wasn't even like too firm. Like It wasn't like tough when we bit into it. I'm not going to say anything, but you try this. Try this. Okay. Hot. Eat it. Mm. Is that gooder or worser? That is better. The milk uh, soaked was much better to me. Yes. Definitely. And we did the right thing. We soaked it overnight in the milk, yeah. which obviously helps. So you can do it for a couple hours, but they recommend overnight. All right, let's throw in some tacos and try it for real. Let's do this. Awesome, we'll try the milk one. That was really good. Yeah, the yeah, milk yeah. one was good. I'm excited tacos. for the tacos now. I'm excited. I like my cheddar cheese, but as you know, tacos, you put anything in it that you desire. It doesn't have to go any which way. It's whatever you like. So yeah, some cheese. Love onion. I'm a big onion lover. Got some shredded lettuce. Whoop, I just made a mess. Nice. And then we got some slices of avocado. Now I'd probably put some sour cream on top, but I want to chase the shark. So I'm going to keep it simple. Maybe add a little bit of salsa after this. We're all set. All right, Darcy, let's dive into these tacos. Time to dive in. And also, in honor of Shark Week, I don't know if you ever see, but I'm always wearing this shark necklace that I actually hand tie, tie and make and sell myself. So check it out if you want to support Dar Sizzle and get your own super cool shark necklace that I'm wearing. And I've been wearing it for a while now, if you haven't noticed. So on check the website, it out. On the website. Description below. A lot of sterling silver nautical charm pendants available for y'all. All right, yeah, here we go. Stuff. We got Land Shark Week. Yes. Land Shark. Land and Shark, shark Tacos. Well, shark what can be better? Heck yeah. Hmm. Oh, I'm going to take a sip before my food is that bad. I'm diving into the food. Let's taste it. It's really good. It's really good. I was honestly like a little scared to even eat the shark tonight, <laughs> but it was much better than expected. It's actually quite delicious, and especially in the taco, it's just not your typical fish that you would catch, like snapper, mahi. It's just not comparable to those. It's just different in its own unique way, and uh, they're very lean fish. They're all muscles. So yeah, it was really great. Just you know, just 
you know, we did it, we prepared it a little bit better than we did last year. So you're, everyone's always improving. Yep. Soak it in the milk. Right. Put it in a taco. Have a land shark. Right. And it's delicious. Right. So guys, hope you guys enjoy. Have a have a little bit of shark. Don't go crazy. But of course, check your regulations where you live. Yeah. And until next time. Follow your dream and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Cheers, Shark Week.